be one of those days. <laughs> well, I am so pleased that you have joined Marco and me on this wonderful journey we're going to take together. It's all about moving from an idea to a storyboard. I am a television producer, director, and scriptwriter. And so this is one of the best journeys that you can go on to get to writing a screenplay. And today we're just going to give you the foundations of doing that. But Marco has got some really, really exciting and different stuff to show you. Hello, everybody. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on uh, where you live or the time you're watching this video. I'm Marco. I am an entrepreneur. But uh, today I will be more a geographer of emotion and uh, a script writer. So I'm sure you will enjoy this journey. As Elsa said, it, uh, it's, a, it's a great journey that we are proposing to you. And uh, so I would uh, go straight to the presentation of the structure of, uh, of our uh, proposal, of our course, which title is uh, from uh, uh, idea to storyboard. So let's, uh, let's analyze together uh, the structure of it. We will start today with module one uh, by drawing our idea. We will uh, share with you uh, a technique who will help you to, to draw your idea. It may look a little bit strange, but you will see it's very nature. And then Elsa, we go on with module two, three, and four. Elsa. Okay, so in module two, we talk about your idea. We talk about what a screenplay is and how a screenplay is different from a stage play or a novel. And then of course, the genres. There's so many genres and it's great fun to adapt your idea to one of those genres. You might well have started out thinking, oh, well, I'm going to write a comedy and it turns into a drama. Then characters. Ah, but before that, in module three, we talk about the structure of a movie. Every piece of artwork that is actually performed has a structure. It's the three act structure. Marco is going to give you more ideas on different kinds of structures. And then module four, we go into the characters, defining your characters. Maybe your characters already exist, but we are going to show you how to define them if you're making them up from scratch. And then over to Marco for module five. Absolutely, module five will catch a train will lead us to uh, five different stations. The first one is the timeline, timeline station. The second one is the hero's journey. The third one is the plot. Then we go into the mood board. And finally, the final station is the storyboard. And through this journey, we will uh, learn uh, about the power of mapping. The initial map that you will draw will become all these things, but you will use the same base. So I think we can uh, we can start here, Elsa, and uh, with module one, and it's about drawing your idea. So, have you got an idea for a movie, for a story, a TV story, or so for a reality show? Well, if you got it, you will draw it emotionally. Just uh, some, uh, some a, a small premise. I, I had an idea, and this is already the news, <laughs> one day. And uh, out of this idea, I wrote a book called uh, The River of Life, which is a sort of journey in between reality and imagination. It's a story, actually, of the journey of that kid, that child with the suitcase. That is myself when I was three years old. When I found this picture, it, it was an emotional shock for me. And uh, I decided to realize a different journey compared to those I was used to. And uh, yeah, it came out this book and out of this book, uh, uh, it came out uh, many other things. Uh, we, we did, uh, we created a network 
uh, called Emme, uh, to which uh, Elsa, of course, uh, uh, belongs. And uh, we are almost 100 people, friends from all over the world. And we are following, let's say, uh, this emotional geography, the emotional geographies of our life. So from that book, a lot of things came out, but I'm not going to talk you to talk about this, but uh, about the fact that initially the idea was not a book. I mean, the very first thing that I did when I found this, uh, uh, this picture and uh, also while I was studying uh, uh, geography at that time, uh, I was uh, very involved in the, in the concept of uh, emotional cartography. The, the very first thing was drawing this map. I had in my mind the journey of this, uh, of this kid, of this child, and it came to me very natural instead of writing it uh, to, to draw it. Even if, as you can see, my drawing is very poor, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I think uh, we are going to talk about contents, about uh, substance today. And, uh, and uh, actually this, uh, this map became the base of everything. Out of this map, in, I, I, with this map, I imagine a sort of itinerary for this child uh, along a lot of places that were just the matching of the emotional uh, status I was uh, thinking to feel in, in that particular moment of, of my journey and a place that I thought could match properly with that kind of emotion. So just to make a short example, when I, when I was realized this, realizing this journey, once I found myself in this uh, lake of the stolen dreams. So you see a lake and stolen dreams. So, so this feeling of having around this lake people whose dreams were stolen by someone else. And I, 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 in my, my emotional geography, a lake is a place, is a quite sad place, you know? Uh, so I matched the lake with the stolen, with the concept, the emotion of stolen dreams, so sadness and so on. I just matched emotions with places and I created this map and I had this kid uh, crossing all these places. So this was the initial idea of the book. Then I, I added pictures, I added texts, but what I would love to talk to you today is, a, is about the power of mapping, not, not only emotional mapping, just mapping in general. Idolo Calvino, an Italian writer, said that each kind of map, it doesn't matter if it's a physical map, a political map, an emotional map or whatever map, it's uh, an invitation to a journey. And it's very fascinating. Uh, think about yourself in front of a map, any kind of map. You, you, you are not indifferent. I mean, you, you are curious. For example, in this one, you might wonder where this, uh, this child is going, where he comes from, uh, uh, how did he, if he can reach the, the sea of freedom or not. You know, you, you work with your imagination and uh, this is, exact, this is a, a great energy, a great power, a great tool in order to, to have a starting point to then develop your ideas, which is basically what uh, I've been doing with the book and with, uh, with the rest of the project. So it's a, a powerful way for activating your creativity. And uh, that ends up to be something uh, substantial, you know? And uh, it is also uh, something that can be the initial point, the starting point, which was my case, but we are using maps also at the end of a process of creation. So maybe a person prefers to write first the story or, uh, and then at the end to have just in a glance all the story to map it out, you know? So you can use it whenever you feel comfortable with we would suggest to use it at, at the very beginning of your, uh, of your project, of your idea. It's, a, what, it's also a very important methodology to elicit your emotions and then to draw them and, and to have probably the illusion to, to manage your emotion. We always use with, uh, with care the word manage, management when we talk about emotions, but uh, having your emotions drawn on a map somehow gives you the, the idea that uh, you have a, a clear picture and you can move at least uh, in a better way uh, along 
all the emotions uh, uh, of your life. So basically, these are the powerful of uh, uh, the powers of emotional mapping. We have been uh, applying this uh, emotional mapping methodology to many, many things uh, in order to better understand the relation with our uh, body, with our face, with parts of our body, with our life, uh, also for children. I mean, drawing is the very first language of human beings. So, uh, and again, aesthetical uh, steps are not important. By the way, this map drawn by children of five is much better than mine. Uh, and I'm not five, you may understood it. And uh, you see in the business, we apply a lot of, uh, we, we, we have drawn many, because it's something to make a sort of, to make it clear where the company comes from, where the company is, where the company is going, you know, to talk, talking about the vision of the company and about many, many other things to journeys. We did metaphysical journey and we applied this cartography to elicit the emotions that a, that a place could, uh, uh, could deliver to us. You know, the famous somewhereness, the spirit, the, the genius logic of the Latins. And then, uh, well, I mean, there are many, many examples uh, that uh, uh, are available for those who will be passionate about mapping. So, but let's stay in our, uh, in our uh, uh, topic of today. So these are basically, it's very easy to, to map uh, emotionally anything. So you will have these two wheels. The first one on, uh, on my left uh, is uh, uh, about geographical elements. So you will find uh, geographical uh, elements and also atmospheric uh, phenomenon. And the, on the other side, you have emotions and, uh, and feelings uh, they are not exhaustive, of course, so uh, feel free when mapping your uh, idea to use other kinds of emotions that are not included in this 64 or other geographical elements that are not in this, uh, in this wheel. So you just, as I said, will need to cross, to match one element of uh, the wheel with the one element of the other, of the other wheel. And that's it. Basically, uh, uh, what we will uh, uh, ask you at the end of this module one, that is very close, uh, it's think about your idea and, uh, uh, and draw it by matching, as I said, the elements of these two wheels uh, as if it was a, a sort of journey. You, you will see during our course, the word journey is a key word because uh, we will talk about the hero's journey and uh, the movie that will come out from your idea or the TV series is basically a journey. So uh, imagine your idea as a journey and draw the itinerary to your uh, main character or hero. It can be yourself or it can be a character that, that, that you create, uh, of course. And uh, you will cross or she will cross all these imaginary places that you have created. The only element, geographical element that we, we ask you to draw on, on, your, uh, on your map is a river. And this will also be used as timeline because, you know, a river in every culture is considered as, a, as a representing uh, the, the flow of time. And uh, you will see how useful it will be uh, having a river in your map when we will use this map for uh, going further in our project of uh, realizing a movie. So this is uh, the end of the module one. And um, now uh, I just uh, give the, just give the word to Elsa for uh, module uh, two, uh, three and four. And uh, again, I welcome, you, I welcome you on board. Absolutely wonderful. Of course, we all know that uh, that to write a good story, you have to involve those emotions, the emotions of your reader, of your audience. Emotions are key. <laughs>